Today we're diving into Touch OSC controlling the RC600 and we're going through everything. How to turn track effects on and off, normal effects on and off, change the volumes for your master, your rhythm, your individual tracks, change the key of your harmonies, uh, change the drum kits, change modes, get drums from the Touch OSC straight into your unit um, which you can put in your loops or not as suits and uh, also how to select uh, individual patches on your RC600. So there's a lot in it but uh, let's get started. First things first if you want to I have made my complete setup available in the shop there's a link below where you can download this exact touch OSC setup and file and then you can go through the exact, you can go, oh, how did he get the kits? Oh, amazing. Um, it's set to this parameter. This is set to this. You can just copy them and tweak things. But feel free, even if you've downloaded it, feel free to watch this video and we'll go through all of that too. So you don't have to download anything of mine if you don't want to. You can just load Touch OSC and get it all happening yourself. So, right. I think, that's, I think that's the admin out of the way. <laughs> the first thing you do need is some connection to your RC600. I'm using the Woody Master. It means this connects via Bluetooth, which is amazing. We have connected. Wonderful. So now I can open up this and we're ready to go. Uh, and let's dive into it. Let's go through this and we'll break this down bit by bit. I have a rhythm start stop. I have that set to the Cajon guide, the kit, and four to the floor, the basic guide kick drum. I can change the rhythm uh, level, the rhythm volume level, and I can change the kits. Go through all of these. <laughs> Lovely. Some of these are great. All right. And it will change life, which is great if you're wanting that four to the floor mix during a song. And you maybe you're changing songs, uh, and you suddenly you want it to become like a techno. Uh, a dance, a really solid dance beat underneath it, you can do that. So when I hit that rhythm button, it's set up and sending a specific message, a specific CC MIDI message to the RC600. And we need to first set that in Touch OSC. And then we need to set what the RC600 does when it receives that message. So let's go through just the basics of what's set for that button and then we'll talk about what you have to set on the RC600 to get it working. So if we exit here and we click on this uh, rhythm button, you'll, you have to be a little bit careful uh, if you download this file, some of the text is overlaid over the actual buttons. So if we go up here on the right, if you want to go to the document tree, everything is written out. So rhythm start stop, that's actually the button. And if we eventually get down somewhere, um, I'm not sure where I've put it, let's be honest, but you'll see somewhere here that it's literally, I've got just text rhythm. So if you're clicking on something, check in the document tree that this data is just a label, that's all. Um, and what we really need is the button, rhythm start stop. We're going to go down here, you're going to see uh, button toggle, press. Um, you can go into any of these MIDI messages 
control change, channel 1, controller 1, scale 0 to 127, we're just, it's a max min start stop setup. But if you want to, the file has all of this so you can go through it and not have to come back to this video. So that the RC600 knows what to do when we press that button, we need to go into menu, hit menu again, assign, we're going to go assign 1, source is MIDI CC01, we can change this but we set it to 1 so we need to make sure this is set to 1 as well. You can usually leave this the same moment, uh, 0 to 127, the target is rhythm start stop. So this is where we choose what it does. We're choosing rhythm start stop and the minimum is off, the maximum is on. <laughs> Which means that when I press that button it's, uh, it's either starting the rhythm or it's stopping the rhythm. Perfect. Now we're going to move on to changing and choosing the kits. So this is the one I've been asked the most about. It's actually pretty straightforward, so let's talk through it. If I select the Studio Kit in the Touch OSC platform, and I go down to the MIDI messages, you'll see that I have Control Change, Channel 1, Controller is now 2, so we're going to set that in the RC600. And the scale is 0 to 0, so instead of 0 to 127, I've set it to 0 to 0. So anytime I press that button, it's going to the minimum value for CC number 02. If you look, if we look at live, the very next kit in the sequence, and we come down to those same MIDI messages, you'll see that it's still type control change, channel 1, controller 2, still on the same signal path, but the scale now goes from 10 to 10. So instead of being the minimum value, it's adjusted just slightly higher, which basically means we're scrolling through the kits. So you can guess what the next kit will be, just a value slightly higher. So if we go to light, and we go to those same MIDI messages. You'll see that we've got control change, channel one, controller two, the same settings, but the scale is 20 and 20. The minimum and maximum is 20 and 20. That means we've just gone a little bit further along the values we're switching kits as we go. So if you just wanted to pick the Cajon kit, you want to adjust a button for the Cajon, that's quite a few further down. We're going to have to go quite a bit further in that minimum and maximum range, but the idea is the same. We go to those MIDI messages and what you'll notice is now the scale says 70 to 70. So that's really somewhere in the middle, close enough to the middle between 0 and 127. Um, 0 being the very first kit, and then there's a point that it shifts. Halfway-ish, 70 is the Cajon kit, and then if you keep going up, you'll hit the next kit, the next kit, the next kit, the next kit. So it's very easy to do. Again, if you want them all there, you can absolutely do that. But you can just have your favorite three or four if you want by using the appropriate number in that scale to choose. Let's just check out what you need on the RC600. Over on the RC600, we do exactly the same as before. Menu, menu again, assign. We're going to go to assign 2. We've already used assign 1. And MIDI CC2. The range is still going to be from 0 to 127. We want all those options, but we, as we scroll across, our target is the kit, so it's choosing the kit, and our minimum is the very first kit at 0, the studio kit, 
and our maximum is the 808 909 kit which is essentially value 127 make sense all right we're using a slightly different button in touch osc to change the rhythm volume but the basics are the same if we click on the rhythm volume we go in let's um again you'll look now we've got channel controller three um scale zero to 127 i've actually set in the assign um a different level on the rhythm so it's maximum i think is 100 but that's that's in our assign so let's take a look at what's slightly different about this one menu menu assign assign three you'll see that it's switched on all of these are on midi we've got cc03 we've still got zero to 127 we've got the target as the rhythm level and then the minimum is zero the maximum is 120 i have it set at 120 that's as loud as i've ever found i need the rhythm to be and it just saves even if i bumped it by accident and i had it at 200 that would be extraordinarily loud in a loud gig so it just means i can't make any uh, mysterious mistakes <laughs> with with a crazy overpowering rhythm and I keep the minimum at zero so that I can fade fade out or remove the rhythm completely if I want if we now go here in our rhythm that's zero rhythm completely off so it's playing but there's no sound That top rhythm level is set to 120. That's the maximum I want it to go to. And it means I have more control over this fader than if I set it to 200, which is much louder again. Uh, typically, I have it set about 30. So it's really subtly adding something in my, in my mix if I use it. Uh, the one thing you will need to be aware of with rhythm, if you're using the same memory after starting and stopping the rhythm, it will come on automatically for your next track. So if you don't want that, you have to just uh, stop the flashing rhythm light. And the good thing is, to do that with no sound, you can turn the rhythm completely off. And then tap rhythm twice. Then set it back to the level you might want it later. All right, oh, that took a long time. We've done one button. <laughs> the next is track effect C. So this is just triggering track effect C so that I don't have to go through mode two, mode three, track effect C. And again, if we exit, we can click on track effect C. We can see that it's set to channel one, controller 11, um, zero to 127, it's literally on or off. And that coincides with the assigns that are in the pedal. So this is where it probably is useful if you're confused by any of this to download the whole setup in, on my website because uh, you'll get the patches that are already linked exactly to this touch OSC setup. Hey. But if you're just watching at home and you want to set up something like this or understand it for yourself, you now know what to do. You set a controller number that you haven't used. In this case, it's 11. You go menu, menu, assign, you choose a new assign that you haven't used, make sure it's switched on. You then choose the CC number, the controller number to match. So in this case, it would be CC11. You then go page across and you set the target to track effect C. That is all that needs to be done. Exit, make sure to save. 
in your memory and you are set up ready to go. What I have track effect C set to is compression on my rhythm track. So if I'm doing an acoustic Sunday, a very chilled kind of thing, I just want a relaxed groove. I don't need it to be that punchy. It's just adding something into the mix. Cool, but track C. We've now got compression. It's a little bit more punchy if I'm doing a dance or a party set. Again, turn it off nice and relaxed. <laughs> um, all right, mic mute, pretty straightforward. Literally just mutes my mic so that I can add additional guitar layers into some of the tracks that are set to have both vocal and guitars. Saves me having a mic switcher. It's not the ideal scenario, but given we've got a bunch of tracks to play with, it works pretty well for me and keeps, keeps the board compact. Effects, one, three, and four. Yes, there's no number two. I ran out of assigns and track, uh, effects two is a little bit of an experimental one for me. Um, but I also have things preset on some of those effects when I switch through uh, the different effects banks. So the whole bank is set up for a particular tone or sound that I want. On the bottom we have 19, single, 20, multi. These are my two main loop patches. And you might have guessed it. 19 is single mode. It means that I can build a loop for a verse and a chorus and switch back and forth between them beautifully. It's all set up to do that. And then back to 20 after that particular track or song. And I'm back on multi mode where everything will play together unless I start and stop it. Again, if you want to break down how to do this, if I click that button, sorry, I exit here. If I click, not the text, but that button, cool button, we're gonna go down. You're gonna see it's on momentary. Um, you're gonna see the MIDI program change 119 uh, down here, 119. And what it is, is and this goes to 20. So on the RC600, the program changes start essentially at zero is one. They're, they're all one out for the, um, the, the memory patch that you're after. But you can, you can go and set that up. Um, it's a program change, so it doesn't need any assign or anything in the pedal to connect to it. Just that you're on channel one, which is MIDI messages. Back to our main settings. I have track three volumes and I have track four volumes. Uh, again, in the assigns for these on my board, I have this maximum set at 98 for both of them. So 98 and down to zero. What that means is I can bring in and out certain parts of my songs without stopping them. <laughs> or, so if I bring this down to zero, technically it's still playing. I don't have to press a button anywhere to start and stop it, but there's no signal going out. And then I can raise it up. Or, in the example of uh, Ain't Nobody that I just filmed and uploaded the other day, I have track three set to, let's say 75% somewhere around there and when I record that lead it's not overpowering when it comes back in on those last choruses it's playing but it sits nicely in the mix
detail heavy today. Next section, setting the key for your vocal harmonies. You can see I've got all the keys there. I can set C, D flat, D, E flat, everything. That is changing the key that is programmed into the harmonies. So if I wanted to mid song, if I had a key change, something in C, I could set it to C. Later, if I have a key change, I can set it to D. Just moves beautifully, seamlessly. How amazing. Connected with that, effects one on every effects bank is my harmony. So whether I'm playing lead, I have harmony available. Whether I'm uh, putting down a bass line, I have harmony available. Whatever effects bank I'm on, effects one is always the harmony. So I have it super subtle. Uh, that's how I like it rather than really obvious. And I use it less because of having to choose the key than I would uh, previously with the Voice Live 3 where the harmony is, is set from your guitar chord, uh, which a couple of interesting opinions. I like the harmonies locked into the key uh, somewhat better from the RC600. They're tighter. There's not that momentary change where um, it's it's figured out a key wrong <laughs> or where you have a stop and you still want the harmony but you're not actually playing the chord anymore but you're singing a note. So interesting both have their advantages and disadvantages uh, I, I may well change back to using a vocal processor and part of the reason is just remembering to set the key and change it. I can change it mid song but it's just another thing that you have to do when you're performing. So uh, I've left these all in there as it is because a bunch of you will find this useful and you don't have to figure it out. Um, you know you can just copy this and Steal, steal all the info basically. So let's just go through it. Uh, C, I'm on the label, so we don't want the label where it says text C. We want to find a key of C, which is a button. So let's go down, and uh, what we're going to find in this one our MIDI control change, channel one. Controller 9 and our scale is 0 and 0. This is important. Um, that's how we get C and as we work up the scale at different points it flicks to the next uh, pitch, the next key. So let's go D flat. Uh, just check that I've got, again, I've got the label so I need to go key of D flat, button. But now what you can see We've got channel 1, controller 9, so it's the same effect, the same assign, just one assign, but the scale value is 10 to 10. So we've gone from C, now up the scale a little bit, to D flat. That's how we set them. So you know that D is going to be, I don't know, 17 or 20, somewhere there. Um, uh, D, let's just get to the key of D button going down channel 1 controller 9 scale is 20 so now we've moved up further that's now the key of D so again you guys can program this in and do it all with your current uh, RC600 touch OSC setup amazing <laughs> all right the one thing you will need to know here is what to set the target to and so whatever effects input effects for your vocal harmonies you've got it set to I've got mine as effects A then you need to set parameter 4 for effects A let's go through it going into your assigns menu menu assign 
this is set to uh, 9 and when we go across and set the target we've got to set this to in effect a parameter 4 so what is parameter 4? if we go into our input effect we hit loop loop again input effect effect a we're on harmony I've got mine at a third above we go across parameter number four is the key ready parameter one two three four is the key perfect on this right hand side got handy access to mode one mode two and mode three and that'll change that directly on the pedal I use the track select to cycle through those modes but sometimes it's just easier to go directly to mode 3 where I have my effects and then it's either one press or some potential double tapping on the feet to break this down again if you want to set these up let's click on the button mode 1 uh, again, channel controller 6, so it's a different um, assign that I've set, but again, scale 0, and if we go to 2, if I can click on it, you'll see 1, 6, scale 70, which is mode 2, it's in the middle of that 0 to 127 range, and then you guessed it for channel 3, we are going to have. 127 the far end of that range to go to mode 3 and let's just uh, find it in this document tree oh my gosh channel 1 controller 6 scale 127 you will have to assign in your pedal just a reminder anything that's a control change uh, channel 1 is the MIDI channel for most of us that we're running the controller you choose that in your assign MIDI 006 I think it will come up as it's actually just 06 and the target you want is pedal mode with a minimum of mode 1 and a maximum of mode 3 directly triggering the drum sounds inside the RC600 there's uh, I forget how many hundreds of different sounds per kit so you can have an entire page uh, of touch OEC just with those different sounds if you wish and you can uh, have them go into your loops so you have to change a little setting on the RC600, we'll go through that in just a minute to do that. I don't, but and I don't use them simply because I'm preferring using the Woody Master, which although its latency is very slow, means I have no cables, I just connect via Bluetooth, I'm ready to go, but there is a slight delay and I found it varies at times it's not 100% consistent and so if you're putting those into your loops with the occasional inconsistent uh, delay in the Bluetooth communication it doesn't work so well but again I'm not using them in my loops I'm still using the Akai MPX8 for samples and sounds like this but you absolutely can do that and uh, we'll go through the tweak in the RC600 to make that happen but first let's just let's just cover the actual MIDI data in touch OEC so uh, what have we got tambourine button alright we're on channel 10 this is the default 
that is set for your rhythm inside the RC600. Uh, so probably use that. Uh, note 54. So again, each of these relates to a different thing. If I change this to 55 and we go back in, we don't have a tambourine anymore. All right, if I go back to 54, we've got our tambourine sound. So, that's an interesting sound for an open hi-hat. <laughs> okay. So, for a moment, I forgot there that the drum sounds relate to the kit you've chosen. I'm on cajon, so that is the open hi-hat sound, essentially, from a cajon. If you change the kits to a studio kit, to uh, any of the different options, you'll start to get a few different sounds across the board. I've also linked below this the uh, MIDI implementation guide from the RC10R, which will give you a list of the sounds and their relative number, so you can choose. You could have a whole page of just the different drum sounds, so that you have many, many more available, if you wish. But let's get to the one little thing in the RC600, which allows you to either have the uh, rhythms, these sounds, go into your loops to be recorded and then you can choose which track uh, or they won't be recorded at all and uh, it's in an interesting little section. Okay, you need to go to menu, to output, routing, input rhythm and then we're going to scroll all the way across to the end, keep going, uh, rhythm out. This goes direct to the output which will not be recorded in your loops, or you can change it to loop, meaning it will go into the loops. So currently on loop, it means it will be recorded, but you still have to make sure that the rhythm is going into those tracks. So exit, we're out of there, we're now going into loop, let's go to track one, and again we're going to scroll all the way across, and we get this page, and you'll see that rhythm, it's currently off, it's not going into track one. So if I wanted the rhythm in track one, I'd scroll across, and I'd turn that on. The rhythm is now going to be recorded in track one. What I love about Touch OEC, whether you're on the, uh, an iPad, a tablet, or the computer, is you can go in and uh, copy a combo. So I can go, that's, that's set to patch number 19. I can now copy that, paste it. I now have another button that says 19 single. I can change the button just now going, let's say, so remember the one off, 18 goes to patch 19. Let's say I wanted to set this to patch 25, which is a setup for a specific song. That's now already ready to go. It will change my uh, RC600 to patch 25. And I can just go in here and change the text. Uh, it says 19 single. I'm going to say uh, 20. I think I set it to 25 so that's going to be patch 24. 24 and if this was the name of a specific song I could put brown eyed girl. That's my, that's my brown eye. Perfect. Ah oh, yeah. Um, Wonderful, that's done. Now when I go here, uh, let's see if I can film with my phone, just so you see. <laughs> just so you can see, we're, we're testing this out. Okay, so I'm gonna click 19, switched, 20, main, 24, it's gone to, ah, oh, it has gone to, no, it's gone to 26. <laughs> I did it, I said it the wrong way. So, it's really easy once you've got a framework like this to just copy stuff 
and adjust it to suit yourself. You could have a whole page just set up for the patches that you use. There's a lot of options. <laughs> so I think we need to wrap this up. Um, a reminder that if anything's confusing, drop me a comment, we'll go through it. Uh, if you've downloaded these from my website and you've got questions, you've got my email and details in the download, um, plus a bunch of pictures and set up things in that mix. So shoot me an email if you're confused or something's not working. Um, we're going to cover how to copy that Touch OSC file to your iPad or tablet because I think that's important um, rather than taking your entire laptop or that to, to gigs just to use Touch OSC. And finally, thanks for tuning in. This has been an incredibly long video. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it and you have fun. This maybe opens up some new ideas with your looping and playing. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>